1958, year of the Tigers' national championship. Coach Paul Dietzel guided his aggressive team to collegiate football's highest honor. His able staff was composed of Charlie McClendon, later LSU's head football coach, Bill Peterson, destined to be a college and pro head coach, Carl Maddox, who later was director of athletics at LSU, George Terry, and Abner Wimberley. Appropriately, Billy Cannon was the big gun of the Tiger team. Here, he hit pay dirt in the season's second game against Alabama. At Mobile, the Tigers won 13 to three. The talented 58 team had stars galore. Another of them was Don Scooter Purvis, shown in a 50-yard gallop in the Miami game. LSU won that one 41 to nothing. And the Tigers downed Kentucky 32 to seven. One of the exciting plays saw quarterback Warren Rapp toss a scoring pass to Red Hendricks. Another key figure in the Tiger backfield of 58 was Johnny Robinson. This 35-yard run helped the Tigers smash Duke 50 to 18. But Cannon was never far away, 25 yards and six points against the Blue Devils of Duke. The Tigers then took their white team, go team, and Chinese bandits to the Sugar Bowl to play Clemson. Billy Cannon threw a pass to Mickey Mangum for the game's only touchdown. In 1959, Billy Cannon again was the central figure in what may well be the single greatest moment in Tiger football history. The 89-yard punt return against Ole Miss. Late in the game, when Cannon pulled this run, the Tigers were trailing 0-3. In 1959, based on this run and other performances, Billy Cannon won the coveted Heisman Trophy. In 59, the Tigers lost one regular season game to Tennessee, and then were blanks 21-0 in a Sugar Bowl rematch against Ole Miss. The new star in 1960 was Jerry Stovall, later to become a professional star, and in January 1980 was named head football coach at LSU. Lynn Amity, the new quarterback, was to account for numerous touchdowns in his career. LSU won only five games in 1960, but by the 1961 season, they were ready for better things. After an opening loss to Rice, they were not beaten again. Wendell Harris returns this punt for a touchdown against Texas A&M. Stowball was always a dangerous threat on offense. Bo Campbell could run with power, and he helped LSU beat Kentucky 24 to 14. In the 23 nothing victory over Florida, Dwight Robinson, Jerry Stovall, and Danny Newman stood out. Here, Newman grabs a scoring pass from Amity. In the Orange Bowl that year, the Tigers played their last game under coach Paul Dietzel and beat Colorado 25 to seven. The Tiger band and other supporters showed that Louisiana and LSU spirit. Wendell Harris made good a 17 yard run against the Buffaloes to near the goal line. Charlie Cranford got the score. Jimmy Field was a running quarterback. And Gene Sykes got the last score with this blocked punt. The Tigers won the game easily, and shortly after the season, Charles McClendon was named head football coach at LSU. You know, anytime you become head coach uh, 
as they say, the buck stops with you. Well, it was a little bit of a thrill and very anxious moments, but I think I was a little prepared for it. You know, having been at LSU for nine years an assistant coach, probably that feeling would be a little bit different than, uh, you know, going to a new school or some other school. So uh, I felt like I knew the personnel and I knew the surrounding, the people, the administration and all, so I was probably a little bit more relaxed than most head coaches could be. You know, I had a very tough decision uh, at the time that I came to LSU. I was had an opportunity to go to Kentucky at the same time. That's my alma mater. And uh, probably the biggest difference was uh, Dr. John Hunter, our president at the time, and the athletic director, Jim Corbett. They kind of got me off into a corner. And I guess maybe having been at LSU nine years, knowing the situation was I probably felt a little bit more comfortable by being here at LSU rather than maybe being at uh, the University of Kentucky where there had to be a lot of changes. My family would have to make a lot of changes, so it was probably easier staying here. However, following a national championship is never easy, and we had our problems. Our program really didn't change that much uh, at LSU when I took over. I guess maybe, again, relating that I'd been here at LSU uh, as their defensive coach, so defensively, we stayed with the things we did well, something that we understood. And I've never believed in changing things that were good. Under McClendon, the Tigers won nine games in 1962. One of the year's big plays was a 98-yard kickoff return by Jerry Stovall. This run back helped the Tigers beat Georgia Tech 10-7. Stovall scores again. He was LSU's leading rusher in 1962. First year as a head coach, uh, we went to very happily. We had a great year and we went to the Cotton Bowl. We played the University of Texas. They were undefeated. Fred Miller uh, threw Ernie Coy for a five yard loss on the first play from the line of scrimmage. And from then on, I think Texas knew we were there to play. Lynn Amity hit Billy Truax to set up one of the two Amity field goals in the game. Amity's three-pointers were for 23 and 37 yards. Jimmy Field made the game's final score 13-0 with this 22-yard run. The Tigers won seven games in 64 and 5 and beat Syracuse in the 65 Sugar Bowl. Well, even to get closer to home, uh, playing in the Sugar Bowl, my first time to play in it, funny things happened to you. Uh, I know that I was sitting in at a pregame meal and Pete Finney, one of the sports writers there in New Orleans, a friend of mine, uh, he had a very funny way of, uh, he came up to me and told me at the pregame meal, he said, oh, Mac, he said, uh, did you know that any player that had ever played in the Sugar Bowl as a player, has, no one has ever come back and coached a winner. Well, you know what, it really kind of struck me as being funny. Uh, so I kind of related this to the squad. I said, fellas, I've handicapped you one more time. In the 1966 Cotton Bowl, Pat Screen directed the Tigers to an upset of number two ranked and unbeaten Arkansas. Here is Screen to Doug Morrow, a winning combination. We were a very senior football team, and I think by LSU standards, we had a disappointing year. It was seven and three. And uh, we were very fortunate to have the opportunity to play an excellent team in the Cotton Bowl in Arkansas. 
there's no doubt in my mind that Arkansas was a better football team, but not that particular day. It was just a case of uh, a bunch of fellas getting together and being determined to end our careers on a winning note, and we were fortunate to do so. Mike Robichaux and friends fought a defensive war to end Arkansas's 22-game winning streak. Green bounced this pass off a Razorback to Billy Masters. Joe Labruzzo crawls in for one of his two scores behind the block of All-SEC Dave McCormick. Doug Morrow, who made All-America, did the point after honors, ending his collegiate career with 165 points, an LSU record that stood until 1976. Nelson Stokely, one of LSU's best at quarterback, was healthy again in 1967 and helped down Florida with this 50-yard run. Here is a Sammy Grisaffi special, a reverse going for 34 yards against Texas A&M. Stokely to Trigger Allen for six points. The longest touchdown pass of the 1967 season went from Freddie Haynes to split back Jimmy West for 54 yards. That year, the Tigers emphasized the run always. Quarterback Haynes shown here with the ball. Behind blocks by Godfrey Zonbrecher and Joe Redding, he scampered 29 yards to the end zone. Glenn Smith had many brilliant moments in his brief LSU career. This one in a 55-0 drubbing of Mississippi State. In the 1968 Sugar Bowl against Wyoming, Nelson Stokely threw two scoring passes to Tommy Morrell. One for 35 yards, the other for 14. Add great running by sophomore Glenn Smith, and LSU downed Wyoming 20 to 13. Ole Miss downed LSU 27-24 in 1968, but left-hander Mike Hillman filled the air with Tiger passes. This one to Tommy Morrell for 50 yards. In the 37-10 win over the Kentucky Wildcats that year, Tommy Casanova made a classic 27-yard run for a touchdown. Lonnie Miles caught 43 passes during the season, this one from Mike Hillman. LSU would later defeat Florida State 31-27 in the Peach Bowl. Against Auburn in 1969, the Tigers pulled one of the slickest plays in their history. Jimmy Gilbert took a pitch out and hit Andy Hamilton with a perfect strike. This may have been the best football game played in Tiger Stadium in the 1960s. The 1970 season was easily one of the Tigers' greatest, a year of an SEC title and nine victories. Andy Hamilton, number 80, continued as the leading receiver. First here from Buddy Lee, and then from Burt Jones, who would go on to become an all-star Tiger player. The two cousins, Jones and Hamilton, rewrote the Tiger record books in throwing and catching the football. Jones accounted for more than 3,200 yards total offense in his career, while Hamilton gained almost 2,000. 